Well, let's play in the shed day again, and I've set myself a bit of a challenge this time, and I really don't know whether I'm going to succeed. I want to build a starrett type tap wrench, and I'm going to build it out of stainless steel. I made this tap wrench out of mild steel some time ago, and I'm really not all that happy with how it works. It's quite fiddly having to screw both those handles together. So I've drawn out a rough idea of what I'm going to build, just based on the drawing of a Starrett tap wrench. I've got this piece of 20mm stainless round bar and this piece of 6mm stainless round bar. I'm going to make the internal thread for the handle first. So I'm just centre drilling and then I'll drill out for um, an M12 type thread, but I want it to be a fine thread of just a 1mm thread. It seems to me that a finer thread will allow me to torque up the handle onto the um, tap itself a lot easier than having a coarse thread. We'll see. Okay, here's where the enthusiasm uh, was just a little bit more than reality. I'm trying to tap into this stainless steel with my cheap taps and I'm going to use my old tap handle which works okay but it's just a bit of a faff to get it tightened down onto the tap. So now I'm trying to cut the thread and it simply will not cut. It's just not going to happen. Oh dear. Oh well, first failure. So I'm going to have to single point thread it, but unfortunately uh, 14 mil is the smallest I can single point thread with the tools I've got. So I've got it to um, drill the hole out and then change the change gears for a 1 mil thread and then get going again and hopefully a bit of success this time. I'm going to be very conservative and take this very slowly just a little bit at a time. Well that's a relief that worked and the thread doesn't look too bad. While I've got the change gears in place I'll just cut down the external thread to the external diameter size and then single point cut that as well. So after cutting down to what I thought was right, oh poo, the next disaster, that's way too sloppy. I'm going to have to do that again. So back to the lathe, cut it off, cut down to size again, and then single point thread again, and hopefully I've got the external size correct this time. These are just the joys of being a self-taught backyard hobbyist. And in the end, it's no big deal to have to redo it. Alright, let's give that another try and see how we go. It's just, just too tight still, which is good because I can do another little pass and hopefully this time Bob will be my uncle. So, now how's it going? Oh, that's good. It screws on easily and no wobble. Excellent.
I need to drill a hole right down the shaft on the threaded end for that movable shaft to go in and out. And this is a 6mm piece of stainless rod. So I'm just drilling 6mm and then I'll hone it and hopefully it'll be a nice fit. The nice thing about stainless rod is it's made to an exact tolerance. So the 6mm rod is actually 6mm. Now this is still a blind hole at this stage so we give the rod a bit of a test and yep and the resistance is the air that's not coming up round behind it so that's a nice fit. I want the handles to taper into the center a little bit. This is just for a s uh, s what's that word? To make it look better. So I'm just angling the top slide a little bit and I'll cut some tapers. Unlike the Starrett example, I'm going to have a knurl on both ends of the tool. Because I reckon that would look better and would feel better as well. I'd never be able to successfully knurl stainless steel with one of those push into the side type knurl tools. So this tool that I've made that um, pushes top and bottom works a treat. And once it looks like it's cutting a knurl okay, I just engage the auto feed and let it slowly cut its way along.
Alrighty then, things are progressing okay. I've got the blank for the main part of the tool done. And I've got the internal thread cut for the screwing type end of the handle. And so now it's time to knurl that as well. That's all done, so now I can part it off. You can now see how the pieces start to fit together. All the lathe work's now done, so it's now time to convert over to the mill and cut the flats so that I turn that round into two flat sides. This process was not easy. You can see that I've got a lot of stick out from the vise. I've got the tool clamped between bits of aluminium so that I don't damage it and it's sort of holding it fairly stable I'm taking it very slow so just taking little cuts at a time I'm going to take out most of that center section just by drilling it but again because I don't have a very stable platform I'm using different size drills and working my way up to finally a 10 mil hole I'm marking out the V type shape where one side of the tool will fit. That's going to have to be done by hand but I'll just use a small end mill to cut some of the material out just to save me a bit of manual filing. In hindsight I'm not sure whether I should have done this or not but there it is. So now it's off to the vise to do a bit of manual filing. This was a very slow process and in hindsight I really should have taken a lot more effort to get it exactly right. But here it is. Time to put the V in the movable shaft and this all went very easily. The small tungsten end milled cut it quite happily, although I only took very small cuts. There we go, that's almost perfect. I need to cut a slot in the threaded end where the 6mm rod goes in because that 6mm rod needs to be secured with a pin. And again, to my pleasure and a delight, this went fairly well. In my excitement, I didn't show drilling a hole in that rod and making a little pin now I'm just inserting the pin into the rod. It's also got a spring attached to it. And I also forgot to film 
that I weld a little knob on the end of that 6mm shaft. So now you can see the mechanism in action and the tool is pretty well finished. I'll just do a little bit of polishing to bling it up a bit more. You can see how that this style of wrench only requires one hand to tighten it up so it's a lot easier to put the tap in the wrench. So here's the finished product. But... My hopes and dreams are slightly shattered because this tool is not perfect. You can see that I've got the angle wrong there. And also, the internal shaft is just slightly twisted. Just by a pufteenth. And I cut that slot just too far so that you can still see it even when the internal shaft is right inside. So the other thing is that diameter of the, uh, the turning handle is bigger than it should be. I should have made that a lot smaller and those two diameters are also not exactly the same. And I drilled too far inside that handle, <laughs> so I ended up having to put a little spacer piece in. I didn't get the knurls quite right either. The knurl on this part of the handle is not quite as deep as this one and it shows up. So I guess you could say this is a bit of a failure but to me it's not a failure at all even with all those faults it still works perfectly fine. Even though I got the angle wrong for holding the tool the tool still sits in there quite happily it's not exactly square but it still holds it nice and tight so there's no chance of it slipping and the tool feels good to cut a thread so what more could one want? The tool looks good made from stainless, it feels good and it works, so I'm going to call this a success.